We welcome you to the media ministries of the Gathering Church in the Countryside YMCA of Mainville. As we love the Lord and each other, we're trusting that God would use us to plant the church in every YMCA around the world. To this end, would you join us? We meet on Sundays at 10 a.m. and in community groups throughout the week. As you listen to this resource, our prayer is that your love for Jesus would grow deep and your love for others would be seen and heard. Joe and Becca, thank you so much for leading us this morning. Good morning, church. If you do not know me, my name is Paul. I am one of the elders here, and uh, I am incredibly excited to bring the Word of God to us this morning. Uh, If you have not been with us, we uh, are going through a summer series through the book of 1 John. So if you have your Bibles with you this morning, turn to 1 John. Uh, We're in chapter 2 this morning. We've had a... um, uh, Several men in our church leading us through the Word these last few weeks. Uh, And it is my turn. And again, I'm excited. I'm equally as excited uh, to share with you this morning. Again, if you're just kind of parachuting in, if you haven't been with us for the last few weeks, this Sunday you have arrived on Vision Sunday. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. You were po- it looked like you were pointing at Hale. I'm like, what's going on with him? <laughs> Children! Children and Hale, if you want to go. <laughs> Children, you are dismissed to go back for our time. That was, Dave just kept going like this. I don't, I'm not sure what that means. Children, go back for your time to get it together. Uh, vision Sunday. This morning, uh, we are casting the vision. We are excited to share with you as our church family, what the elders uh, have been praying through, have been wrestling with, and now are excited to share with you what God is doing both now, uh, but also in the days, weeks, and months, and quite honestly, years to come uh, in the life of the gathering. And so that will happen up here on stage in just a little bit. But before that, most importantly, 1 John, uh, as we open up God's Word, and I've asked my son Peyton to come and uh, read uh, our text for this morning. We're going to start at verse 18 and go all the way to verse 27. Would you stand as we honor God's Word um, as we read it this morning? Verse 18 to 27. Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out, that it might become plain that they were all are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you have heard from the beginning abide in you. If you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that He has made to us, eternal life. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you, but the anointing that you receive from Him abides in you. You have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything, and is true, and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. Uh, Would you remain standing for just a moment? So you probably didn't show up to church again if you didn't read ahead in 1 John, and you were like, yay, you can talk about the Antichrist this morning. morning." Um, We are going to, yeah, and we're going to talk about a lot of different things and we're going to dissect and pull apart God's word and it's going to be good but as you can tell this is a this is a rather heavy uh, passage of scripture but I believe God's word is living and abiding it's sharper than a double-edged sword it penetrates 
uh, and it judges the thoughts and attitudes of our hearts. And God's Word wants us to wants to teach us this morning and so would you join me as i pray lord we uh we come to you once again and lord as we open up your word as we continue in first john uh, i believe that what john wrote uh, two thousand years ago to the church is still incredibly relevant uh today Lord, what, 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 what John wrote, you have a truths for us to wrestle with, to chew on, uh, and, and, and to proclaim. And so God, I pray that we would have ears to hear uh, and hearts to understand uh, what the Holy Spirit wants to reveal uh, to us through His Word this morning. So we give you this time, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So, uh, in 1 John, uh, as Peyton just read our passage this morning, John continues to address believers within the church. Okay, This is an early church. These are young believers. And uh, John is addressing uh, a lot here. A lot of truths that he wants them to hold on to. But in quick review, before we get to our passage that Peyton just read, uh, from the get get go, I believe Brian started out our summer series in First John, uh, and our the theme. If you can see up here on the screen, our, our our theme, the phrase that we're kind of latching on onto is that you may know. This is kind of the running theme uh, in in John as he writes to the ch- church. Church, he wants them to so desperately. Not just know, but to persevere, to cling on, to hold tightly to the truth that the Holy Spirit has revealed to them. The truth that they know. And I love the clarity and I love the straightforwardness about how John writes. Right? We see this, this phrase, I write this to you so that you may know. I write this to you so that. Right? There's no mincing of words here. John wants the reader, he wants the early church to have clarity, to have an understanding, and he speaks with such directness and straightforwardness. Phrases like in chapter 1, so that our joy may be complete. Chapter 2, so that you may not sin. Again in chapter 2, so that you may know that you are in Him. John, over and over again, wants The reader, he wants these believers uh, to have clear understanding of what they have said yes to, what they believe, and what the Holy Spirit um, uh, has brought to light. So today's text, okay, continuing in this theme, John's desire is for believers to remain in the truth. If you're taking notes this morning, to remain in the truth that they heard received and believed and not only to remain in this truth but to confirm john wants to confirm the truth that they know that they know that they know that they know the real thing okay you you don't have to write all of those notes but um that they know the real thing that they've tasted and seen as god word god's word says that they've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. What the Holy Spirit has revealed to them, the Gospel, that this is truth. They've tasted and they've seen the real thing. Not a false or a counterfeit Gospel. Uh, And I believe, again, it was Brian in week one, he did this great thing, right? Where I, I was on the road, we were on vacation, I was driving, so I was listening to it, um, and I, I didn't see what he was doing. And He's given us the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And He's freely given it to those who through grace by by faith in Jesus trust in Him and the power of the Holy Spirit to live the life according to the truth of God's Word. Jesus Himself in John 6.16 says this, the Spirit Himself, He leads us and guides us not into some truth, not into partial truth. What what does Jesus say? The Spirit leads us into all truth. 
2 Timothy chapter 1 verse I'm sorry 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says that, 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 that this he has given us everything we need for life and godliness you are not missing out church if you hold fast to the word of god he has given us everything that we need for life and for godliness do not believe the, the, the deceit. Do not believe the lies that if I go over to this church or this movement over here or if I listen to that podcast, that somehow you're, it's going to be just re re revealed to you. Everything that we need to know is revealed in the perfect Word of God. It's amazing what was written 2,000 years ago. We still aren't quite getting <laughs> Verse 21, I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And because no lie is of the truth. John was not writing to reveal the truth, church. He was writing to confirm the truth. Right? The Holy Spirit had already confirmed, I'm sorry, revealed illuminated the truth John was saying I'm not reminding I'm not, I'm not telling you anything new I'm simply confirming the truth that you have already received and believed so uh, we all have we all have a favorite teacher right I want everyone just to pause real quick and think back on the one of the fa favorite or maybe you have a favorite teacher in your life it could be all the way back in grade school maybe it was a high school teacher maybe it was in college okay we we all have a favorite teacher uh, mine was dr chan okay and this was uh, at my university and uh, dr chan was about yay high from china okay give him the name and uh he was a firecracker boy he was my new testament professor and uh, he had spent 20 years in Israel, uh, and he came, came back, and he, he, he taught, I think he may have just retired, but a a anyway, Dr. Chan, he would come in the morning, morning, morning to the classroom, and he would put the Word of God, God down, and he would go, who's ready to feast? And it was an 8 a.m. class. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know about feasting, but we'll go for it, right? But he woke us up because he loved people. He loved teaching. But most importantly, Dr. Chan was in love with the Word of God. And it just exuded out of him. Like He could not wait to unpack the Word of God to his students. But do you know something about Dr. Chan, as great as he was? He never one single time revealed anything not one time did he say something we were like i had never heard that before or where did that come from dr chan confirmed god's word he proclaimed god's word and he made it plain for us to understand that's what great teachers do and that, that's what john is trying to do i'm not teaching you anything new this is what you've heard this is what you believed this was that you're whole, whole, holding on, on, on to the holy spirit's role is to reveal truth i'm just here to confirm it go yes fan that flame in your hearts and in your lives verse 22 who is the liar who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist. He who denies the Father and the Son. John asks the question, who is the liar? He answers it, right? The one who denies that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, according to the Scriptures. Verse 23. No one who denies the Son has the... Sorry, no one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Pause. Again, John is clearly addressing an issue within the church. What is going on here? Why does he need to clearly state the relationship between the Father 
and the Son. Earlier, we talk, talked about this. This, this, was, this was a false teaching. This was a popular um, idea, con concept that was going on in the life of the church. And John says, I need to come after this hard and strong and clear. To know God the Father is to know the Son. And to know the Son is to know the fa Father. Within the church, people were claiming to know God the Father, but were denying the revelation by the Holy Spirit that Jesus was God's Son. And John is making it crystal clear that you can't say, well, I believe in God the Father, but I deny the Son. This, this whole incarnate thing, God has a Son. He came into the world. He took, took on flesh. I don't buy that. I don't believe in that. And what John is saying is, that is impossible. The Son perfectly reflects the Father. If you're taking notes, I just want to highlight three verses to you this morning. Colossians 1.15 He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He is the image of God the Father. Hebrews 1.3 Jesus is the radiance of God's glory and the exact imprint of His nature. Jesus Himself in John 10 says, I and the Father are one. You remember even that interaction between Philip and Jesus. The disciples are all around and and Philip says, hey Jesus, show us the Father. Right? What is Jesus' response? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. Church, as we, uh, verses 24 and 25 uh, are, are going to be where we um, and our time this morning. And I love these verses. I love them. As I was preparing this past week, they, it was just like balm to my soul, ministered to my heart so deeply. Um, would you hang in with me here? I, I, I know we've kind of gone deep waters, but please, 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 please catch the beauty and the truth that we find here in verse 24 and 25. Let me read it again. Verse 24. Let what you have heard from the beginning abide in you. If, you. if what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. John encourages believers to abide. And this could be an entire word study on its own. I encourage you to do it. Abide in the truth. And let the truth abide in you. This sounds like one and the same. Okay? Let the truth abide in you. You, believer, abide in the truth. It sounds like it's the same thing. John's just kind of repeating itself. But I think it's very two different actions. We as the believer need to choose to abide in the truth and we need to allow the truth of God's Word to abide in us. That is a willful choice moment by moment and day by day. John, John is saying, let the truth abide in you and you, believer, abide in the truth. Remain. He says, do not depart from your first love. From whatever you were taught at first, the Gospel. What was revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. We can use words like hold fast, believer. Stay with it. One word that I love, persevere, church. Hold fast to this truth. Abide in God's Word. There's two things that I want to highlight here that will help us understand of how to abide and how do we let the Word of God abide in us. John was 
specifically talking and he's saying, hey, right, these de deceptions, these myths that are flying all around us, how do we practically know what is true and what is not true? Okay, how do we abide in the actual truth? The reality is, is that we can't know what is false and what, what is counterfeit and what is actually true unless we know the authority, church. Unless we know what is actually true. Other than that, we're just guessing. In the book of Acts, there was a group, Mike has referred to them often, called the Bereans. Okay? And the Ber Ber Bereans were a group of people Paul came to, to them, and they were known, right? They were marked as people. Scripture says that they studied, they searched the Scriptures to make sure what Paul was saying to them, what Paul was preaching to them, was true. They searched the Scriptures. They were people of the Word. They knew it inside and out. And I guess my encouragement, my challenge for us today, church, is if we abide in God's Word, are we searching the Scriptures? Are we bathing in the Scriptures? Are we letting God's Word wash over us? Abiding in the truth and allowing God's Word to abide in us. Um, I, uh, what, I'm, what, what I'm about to share, I might, I might step on a little toes. And I am perfectly fine with that. We are called in God's Word to abide in the truth, to abide in the Word. Um, there have been many books that have been written over the centuries. We have a book cart in the back that we continually encourage our people to be readers of good books, good theological, gospel-centered, Christ-centered books. And books are great. Books are wonderful sources to encourage us, to feed us, to sharpen us. But can I say it, church? We are not called to abide in books. Uh, there's a lot of great biblical, God-centered, Christ-centered podcasts out there. How many of you love pod podcasts? How many of you love podcasts? Come on. You're like, well, I'm not raising my hand now. <laughs> He's about to bring the hammer. Okay. <laughs> I'll be gentle. Um, there are a lot of Christ-centered, like, ooh, share the podcast. Share, share them. I share them. They've been shared with me. They're really good. They can be great for walks. They can be great for, for di discipleship. They can be great for, for car drives to, to, to work. I want to be fed with God, God, God's Word. I want to know what other people are thinking about, about it. But can I be honest? We're not called to abide in podcasts. Um. It's like praying, like, Holy Spirit, should I say this or should I not say this? I'm going to say it. Um, I, I, I can count, I, I mean, a gajillion times in the last year where I've heard believers within this church, outside of this church, um, they are so quick to refer a book, a podcast, or talk about what they've learned in a book or a podcast. Rarely do I ever hear. Can I share with you what I learned this week in God's Word? We've got to be people of the Word. Because everything else is going to fail us. Mike and I were talking to a uh, very well-known, I'm sure you saw it in the news, two very well-known, highly respected pastors in the evangelical church, moral failures. I've, I've read several of their books. I've listened to their pod, podcasts. They fail. God's Word does not fail, church. 
May we be people of His Word. God has given us beautiful... If God has called you to marriage, He's given us the gift of marriage and our spouses. Right? Incredible gift given by God. He has not called us to abide in our marriage. At least not the sole source of our strength and our truth. He's given us the gift of counseling. And what a gift counseling is. Biblical counseling where a counselor is going to take you to God's Word. But oftentimes, we just want to be listened to. We just need a sounding board. God has not called us to abide in counseling. He's called us to abide in His Word. Friends. God has given us the gift of friends and good counsel. But God has not called you to abide in that friendship. As good as it is, as needed as it is, He's called you to abide in His Word. I feel like I'm going a little long and I apologize for, for, for that. We're rounding third, heading home. But church, would you just stay, 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 stay with me here? Look with me at verse 25. And this is the, oh, this verse. <laughs> and and all, all of this, all of the John is just encouraged, the warnings, the encouragements. But then he brings it, he brings it around, and he says, Oh, but this, this is the promise that he has made to us. Those that believe, those that abide, those that 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 hold on, that hold fast, that persevere, this is the promise to them. Eternal life. When we think about eternity and have heaven and being uh, with Jesus in glory, in perfection forever and ever, uh, we often think in, in terms of quantity rather than quality. I was listening to a, a pastor this week and he was ta talking about etern eternal life. I don't know about you, but th this, is, um, there, this might be the only thing in my life that I'm aware of that will actually, when I stop and think about it, I don't know if this is true of you, that physically makes my head hurt. Have you ever stopped? Have you ever paused? Do it after, not now. Um, have you ever stopped to think about eternity? It makes my head physically hurt. And I think why is because we can't quite grasp it. Because we're finite on this side of glory. We don't quite understand what forever and ever and ever and ever and eternity and never ending glory with Jesus. We don't, we, it's like, I don't, can't, my, 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 my brain is too simple and too small. But quality over quantity. In fact, the New Testament, eternal life, in Scripture is more often equated to quality over quantity. In God's Word, eternal life is equated to knowing God. Don't turn there, Ken, if you want. John 17.3 Jesus Himself prays this prayer. And this is eternal life. That they know You the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Isn't that a beautiful verse? And this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Jesus defines for us eternal life. The quality of eternal life is knowing and experiencing God forever. As one pastor put it, as believers, we will spend the rest of eternity knowing and loving the depth of the nature of our God. Because He is the source of all wisdom and knowledge and pleasure and joy and wonder. Knowing Him and enjoying Him forever is eternal life. Um, 
I'd like to close our, our time in the Word, uh, in a word of prayer. And then we're going to transition uh, into our time of sharing vision. Uh, but church, would you, would you join me uh, now as, as we pray? Um, Holy Spirit, um, your, your word and your truth has gone forth this morning. And without your power and without your presence in our lives, this is simply just a talk. And uh, we just listen and then we leave uh, unchanged. And I, 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 I know you desire so much more for us. And so, Holy Spirit, I, I pray that as your word has gone forth this, mor this, mor this morning, that you would, uh, from the inside out, would you transform us. Lord, if there are areas of our life uh, where we need to uh, um, give up and forfeit and to discard things in order to abide in You, I pray that we would do that. I pray that we would take that step of obedience. Lord, if there are, are things that, 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 that we need to ask You, you for, whether it's godly friendship, or counsel, Lord, those are all good things, but I pray more than anything, Lord, above all that, that You would give us a passion and a desire and a hunger for Your Word. We would be people of Your Word. We would abide in Your Word. We would persevere in the midst of the trials and the temptations uh, and the lies all around us. May we abide in Your truth and Your Word. May we be able to tell what is true and what is fake. Holy Spirit, would You help us and now, Lord, as we transition into this time of excitement and celebration of what You are doing, God, among us, uh, I pray that you, would, that You would rally us, God, around this vision. God, we're, we're, we're excited uh, to, to step into a new season in the life of our church. So we give You this time, uh, and we pray all of this in Your name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.